Welcome to the next installment of my video lecture series for international economics. And in this particular video lecture, we're going to be taking a look at the foreign exchange market and the U.S. money market and look at the simultaneous equilibrium that occurs. So we're going to be taking a look at changes in either market and how that impacts, does or does not impact, the, the other market. So for example, we'll take a look at changes to the money supply, how that impacts equilibrium interest rate in the United States and how that feeds into the exchange rate market. And then we'll take a look at how money supply changes in the euro market will impact the expected return on euro deposits and how that impacts the exchange rate. Now taking a look at this particular graph, uh, some students sometimes have difficulties with this graph. Just remember a couple of things. The upper portion represents the exchange rate market. So the return on dollars, uh, where that intersects the expe expected return on euro deposits, deposits gives us the equilibrium exchange rate between the dollar and the euros. And in the bottom, we have the money market in the United States. Now, if you take a look at this, some of you might be a little confused in looking at this bottom portion because it does not exactly look like the determinant of what the interest rate in the United States is looking at money demand and money supply. Some of you are looking at this and saying, well, when we did this previously, that the uh, demand for money, this line here, was downward sloping. And this looks like it's upward sloping. And in our previous graph, that the real money supply was vertical on the x-axis. So you might look at this and be just a little bit confused by this. Well, let me show you exactly what occurs here. I'm going to bring up a picture of the equilibrium interest rate in the United States that we did previously. So we have our vertical real money supply curve and our downward sloping uh, aggregate demands or the aggregate demand for money in real terms. And where they intersect one another gives us the equilibrium interest rate. All that's actually occurred here is that this actual graph has been rotated. It has been turned 90 degrees in a clockwise fashion so that this axis here is now on the top and the real money holdings is here on the left hand side. Let me go into this and actually do this so you can see what I'm talking about. So I can rotate this to the right and let's see what happens here. Let me move this down a little bit further so you can see what do you end up saying. We see very similar to the graph that we had in the bottom portion. Now we have the interest rate or the rate of return on the x-axis and now the y-axis is real money holding. So we have real money supply coming out this way and it looks as if we have an upward sloping money, real money demand curve. So just realize that's what's occurred. Let me rotate it back for you. Let me rotate it to the left to go back to the original. That is the original. All we ended up doing is rotating at 90 degrees clockwise like that. So we have the same graph. It's just the orientation of it is a little bit different. So make sure you're comfortable with that. I know sometimes students look at that and have some difficulty with it. That's all we did is we rotated the graph by 90 degrees in a clockwise fashion. <clears throat> so let's go back to our original graph here. So now we understood why this is different. Uh, looks slightly different than previous graphs that we've looked at. Also, because of that, realize that if we move downwards here on this part, where it's real money holdings in the uh, U.S., that if we're moving in this direction, that it's actually an increase. And if you go back to the rotation I talked about, that will, will give you that point there. So realize that if I talk about an increase in the money supply, this will be shifting downward because we're this is increasing for the euro, uh, the exchange rate, and moving in this direction here is an increasing in the money market. <clears throat> so let's take a look at this equilibrium. It's the same as we did previously. So we've just incorporated these in one graph that are stacked one on top of the other. So where the money demand, real money demand, intersects the real money supply, that determines the rate of return in the United States. Where that rate of return 
intersects the expected rate of return for euros gives us the equilibrium exchange rate in the exchange rate markets, the equilibrium exchange rate between dollars and euros. So let's take a look at what happens. Number one, we're going to take a look at if we increase the money supply, how that changes things in this market. So again, as I've done in some of these previous graphs, I'm just going to duplicate these items here to save a little bit of time. So I'm going to duplicate that. And as I said, as I move downward, that represents an increase in the money supply. So shifting the money supply from there to there, and let me move that point to here, that would be the new equilibrium. And actually, let me draw this, put an arrow in here to show you that there is an increase in the money supply. And let me use some text to do that. Uh, this thing wants to keep attached to different things. Let me detach it and see if that helps. And it's not helping whatsoever. So you know what I'm going to do when that happens. I'm just going to delete it and type it in here. So we have an increase in the money supply. And let me change the font on that just so it's a little bit easier for people to see. It's a little too big. Let me bring it down to 24. All right, so if we increase the money supply, the money supply shifts, the equilibrium interest rate will be where the original real demand for money intersects the new supply of money in the United States. So let's call that point two. <clears throat> what does this do? This causes the interest rate in the United States to fall. So let me copy and paste that. There's our... R, call that R2. So that gives us the new interest rate in the United States. So we can copy and paste this. And move that over. To there. Let me move this point there and actually let me move this over to here. Come on now. There you go. And change that to a two. And actually, let me move these out of the way because I have to draw a line in here to show what the new equilibrium exchange rate is. Let me put this over here for the return on dollar deposits. And copy this. That did not occur. I want it to duplicate. There we go. Two. <clears throat> so if we take a look at this, we had an original money supply of this level right here, real money supply. The money supply is increased in the United States. This causes the equilibrium point to move from 1 to 2, which represents a decrease in interest rates in the United States. So we see interest rates decreasing in the United States from R1 to R2. That gives us our new return on dollar deposits to look at in the exchange rate market. So where that new rate of return on dollar deposits is and intersects the expected rate of return on euro deposits gives us the new exchange rate. And now it takes more dollars to purchase euros. So let's say if the original exchange rate was $1 per euro, now it takes $1.25 to buy a euro. It's more euro, uh, dollars to buy euros. Therefore, the dollar has depreciated. So this moving, the exchange rate moving from E1 to E2 represents a depreciation of the exchange rate. So make sure you're comfortable with that, how changes in the money supply in the U.S., impact the rate of return or interest rates in the U.S. and how that feeds into 
the foreign exchange market. And that will cause, for example, when the money supply increases, interest rates will fall. This will cause people to look at dollar denominated securities as being less attractive and euro securities is more attractive. So therefore, they will demand fewer dollars and more euros, which means the dollar will depreciate in value because of the increase in the money supply. Alternately, and let me get rid of some of this information, the other thing that we want to take a look at is what happens if we change monetary policy in Europe versus the United States. So let me delete some of this information here. This. Okay. So we have this. Now what we want to do is increase the money supply in Europe. So the European Central Bank is going to increase the money supply. What will this do to expected returns given the ex uh, a fixed exchange rate or the exchange rate that's given? It means the return in Europe will be lower. Realize it means that when they increase the money supply, interest rates in Europe should fall. So this will cause this curve that I've highlighted here to shift to the left. So let me move this to the left here. So because of the increase in the money supply in the European Union, this will lower interest rates, which will cause the rates of return for European deposits to decrease at all exchange rates. So what will occur is that we will move to a new equilibrium point. This will be the new equilibrium point. It is where the original return on dollar deposits, which has remained unchanged because uh, has remained unchanged by the increase in the money supply in the European Union or the euro market. And because they're increasing the money supply, the expected return on euro deposits has now shifted to the left. And let me actually put that in there for you so you realize that. So the increase in the money supply causes this expected return on euro deposits to shift to the left because when the money supply increases, interest rates will fall. So in order to get the new equilibrium exchange rate, we just have to go from where the new expected return on euros intersects the original return on dollar deposits. And that will give us the new exchange rate there. And let me copy and paste this here so we can. Oh, did not want to do that. How about if I get rid of that? That's much better. And I will label that as two. So this is the new equilibrium in the foreign exchange market. And what occurs, this will cause the dollar to appreciate. It'll take fewer dollars to purchase euros. Therefore, the dollar has increased in value. So the movement in that direction represents that, for example, at E1, it took a hundred, it took a dollar twenty-five to buy a euro, and now at E2, it only takes a dollar to buy a euro. Therefore, it takes fewer dollars to buy the same amount of euros, which means that the dollar has appreciated versus the euro. So realize that, that if they increase the money supply in the European Union, the European, the European Central Bank does this, the expected return on euro deposits decreases. The reason is that if they increase the money supply in the short run, interest rates will fall, and this will reduce their expected return on euro deposits. So that's why we have a shifting of the expected return on euro deposits, shifting from there to here. So the new equilibrium is going to occur with a new expected return on euro deposits intersects the original return on dollar deposits at uh, two dash, and that is equivalent. Uh, the equilibrium in the exchange rate market is going to be a point where the dollar has appreciated against the euro.